Hi, welcome back to another Princess Connect video. My name is Lace and today I'm going to be talking about something I don't really want to talk about to be honest, but I have to. It's the whole clan battle tallying mess up like, um, like you can't even imagine my disappointment when I saw this ranking 27 where like, <laughs> Uh, all right, let me stick to the structure. I'm going to be talking about a summary of all of this that's been happening for the last day or two, the whole tallying fiasco, the whole everyone's like changing ranks like crazy. I'm going to be describing what I've seen in about like the higher ranks and stuff. And for everybody that's looking for an educational video, this is not it. Uh, I mean, there are some pieces of like details here and there, like, you know, talking about overflow scamming the maximum potential or talking about like skipping and rage mechanics and stuff like how none of this adds up. I'm going to be discussing a whole bunch of theories and potentially debunking them. I don't know. We'll see what comes out of it. To set the context, let's start off with what the rankings look like as CB ended. In first to fourth place, we've got Scarlet Sky, Scarlet V2, and this is Oasis. Um, unfortunately, Oasis just didn't have two people attacking, and that's a real shame. However, they still managed to get fourth, which is pretty crazy. So fifth, sixth, and seventh, we've got EOS, Ethereal, and Eden. Eighth, ninth, tenth, we've got Valk, which is my guild, Horse Race, formerly known as Erg. I don't know what guild name they want to settle on, but for 10th, we've got Snowdrop. So what has effectively happened is that we have a whole bunch of ranking changes, some very, very dramatic ranking changes, to be honest. So if I compare them side to side, we've got Oasis dropping from 4th here down to 12th. We've got Scarlet V2 from 3rd to 15th, our guild 8 to 27th, EOS from 5th to 60, Sky from 2nd to 75, and Scarlet from 1st to 85. That is some massive, massive drops. And we've got a whole bunch of other guilds climbing from like the lower numbers up to like 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th, all the way to 10. This is what's reflected in the game right now. And I just wanted to talk about this. What I really want to talk about are a whole bunch of different theories that are going around, like, you know, oh, hackers or abusing mechanics and whatever. Let me start with this screenshot, which is absurd to be honest. So a couple of people are going around saying that top 10 guilds are in cahoots because we could bring two Makotos into a clan battle. This is blatantly false. You can't do this. You can get to this screen, yes, but if you try to begin trial, you just can't get through with it. I am more than happy to show my damage logs. Like, you can see that there is no double Makotos anywhere, anywhere at all. It's all single Makotos. It's all single Kauris. You can't, you can't double up, my dudes. So what did come out of this was like, you know, the four Kauri memes. So that's pretty funny, to be honest. We've got leaks of some of the top 10 clans using Minotaur in their own teams, but enough of about that. I think these memes are pretty funny and pretty spicy, but let's move on. Guys, I really hope that you're not falling for this double Makoto thing. It does not exist. It does not work. And I've shown you my damage logs. So what all of this is trying to disprove is the fact that Crunchyroll somehow found out that we were using two Makotos and then they took away our damage. Actually, before anything else, let me tell you how much score we lost. This was our score just as CB ended. That's 274 million. This is our score now. If you can't see that, it's 228 million. We lost 50 million in score, which translates to approximately like 20 to 35 million damage. 20 to 35 million damage, this is what got me thinking and why I think a lot of these theories cannot be true. While we're on the screen, you'll see that Valk only has 25 out of 30 members, and this brings me to my next point. The tooltip here says that the rewards will be sent to all the players who belong to the clan at the time of the clan battle's conclusion. So that's like, you know, right at the end, right after it finishes, right? They even give an example here with the ending times and stuff, and that's exactly what we did. We waited until the ending time, it finished, it started tallying, and then we got people kicked. A bunch of us got kicked and wanted to go into a feeder guild. To further add to this, EOS went from 5 to 60 and apparently EOS did not have any changes in their roster at all. They are still at 30 out of 30. So to me, what this is saying is that the members who left the clan, that this is this is not what was happening. All of this evidence makes me think that it is not this mechanic specifically that caused our points to drop like dramatically. The next point I want to talk about is overkill. As you guys know, it's been a very touchy subject. Overkill, simultaneous battles, overflow, scamming, or whatever you want to call it. Let me make this point very, very clear. Even if overkill or multi-simulataneous battles or whatever, what we call it in our guild is overflow scamming. Even if overflow scamming was not like a legit thing and they took away our points for it, the maximum amount of points I reckon that you can get from overkill scamming is about like five mil. Again, guys, I will give out that overflow scamming. There are equations and stuff and like the highest about theoretical damage that you can actually overflow scam is about 100k per boss. If it's 100k per boss, if you're able to kill the boss about like, let's say, 
say 20 times, so about 2 mil damage, right? So at most, assuming a 2 times multiplier from Minotaur, you can only really scam like 4 mil damage. Guys, this is why I say that overflow scamming is not a mechanic that you really need to focus on. You need to focus on timelining first. But yeah, to come back to the point, 4 mil score versus like we dropping 50 mil score. I know other guilds dropped even more like 60 mil score or something or 70 mil or 80 mil, which is crazy. Taking the points from the overkill, it just does not make sense. There's just no way that it could be overkill. 4 mil versus 50 mil, it just does not add up. Okay, so I just wanted a little bit more evidence in regards to the lever point. Look, Echo God V2 had seven people in their clan left that with 230 mil damage. You just can't do that much damage. If I come down here, we've got Raindrop with one person with 224 million damage. You can argue that it was one hacker, but honestly, I know Raindrop is a competitive guild who had 30 people in there. Another point I wanted to address is the concept of hackers. Like, there are a lot of people that are like, oh man, the top 10 are hacking or top 15 are hacking. All of these ranking changes, most of these are like top 15s. If you think the top 10 are hacking, but the next 10 or 20 are not, I don't know. I don't think that really makes sense. The score differences, especially like after the top five, they're just way too like close. Before anyone from any of these guilds get offended, you guys know that I am not attacking you guys. Like this is about crunchy roll stuffing up. It's about their system. It's just more about the clans that are getting what they're supposed to. Another thing about the hackers is that crunchy roll said that if there were more two hackers in a clan, that clan is not going to be in the clan battle. The clan score just won't get counted. And this, this does not suggest that. You can only drop this hard if you're going to have like three or more hackers. I'm just trying to take the most rational, the most logical explanation from all of this. The top 50 guilds talk, man. Even the top like 400, even mo all guilds talk, guys. All guilds talk. But Grimlord at 5 out of 30 with 217, like, oh my gosh, guys. The last point I wanted to touch on is the sync. Oh, okay, I can't get back in. It's sync attacks on Minotaur. For us, at most, we got two sync attacks on Minotaur. Minotaur has 20 million HP. A sync attack does about 10 million HP. If we did that twice, then we would have done about 20 million damage. I know that's not true because we kind of stuffed up a little bit. And so let's say like 16 million. 16 million damage on Minotaur is times two. It's still only about 30 million. Even if you added this up with all of the other mechanics that I talked about, none of this actually makes sense. None of these explanations, they're just, there's just, it's not enough to account for like all of that points missing. The amount of points missing is just way too much. It's 50 mil and that's just crazy. And it's for these reasons that I think that there was an error when they were counting the scores. I think it was prematurely released. Now with all of this in mind, what could it be then? I reckon the reason that they take so long is that they're actually checking every single damage record. I reckon that they got to about day three or day four before accidentally like, I don't know, spilling the mountain dew onto their like servers. That's what makes most sense because like, like for us, like we were always fluctuating between like 80 to like eight or whatever, right? Because we would always have very organized attack. So it's for that reason that I think it's that, but like, honestly, ah, uh, this screenshot will tell you everything you need to know. Next, I want to talk about why talking about this is important. There is a competitive scene in pre-con and most gacha games, to be honest. It is usually the competitive players that actually, you know, they bring the whales, you know, they bring the people. And I hope this is obvious by now, but the majority of revenue is probably from the whales. And I don't say this as a whale myself. I'm only like a monthly pack player. I've resigned to the fact that I'm not making that much of a difference to revenue. I know that whales are keeping the game afloat. If you piss off all of the whales and they all, you know, do like some chargeback or some stuff like that. Crunchyroll is about to get the biggest audit of their life. I personally am not condoning chargebacks, but that is what is going to happen. So many of these people in the top 10, top 15, top 25, even some of the top 50, a lot of people spend countless hours on clan battle to just fudge the scores and take it away. Like that's just going to be real. It feels bad, man. I know a bunch of whales right now that are like, hey, get me my bank's phone number. That is not good. It's just not healthy for the game. If Crunchyroll gets in deep doo-doo, we get in deep doo-doo. We do not want this game to be shut down. And like I said, it's mainly the whales that are maintaining it. Typically, it's the top 15 to top 25 guilds that are like kind of bringing all that information from the other servers. Imagine if I didn't have resources to refer to, I would not be able to actually tell you like a whole bunch of these mechanics looking ahead into like world 10 or like extreme four, like showing you guys how to clear like that sheer cliff. Most of that just wouldn't exist, especially without the hardcore players. Guys, top 10, 15, 25, it's not all just dolphins and whales there are a lot of hardcore players as well and it's these hardcore players that like get those screenshots that you see floating around in discord oh you should run these comps in cbr if you're versing this comp in arena this is how you beat it a lot of the content is just not possible without these guys it's for these kinds of reasons is why you should care sure my clan lost like what 4k gems from this the fact is that we devoted so much time so much time in preparing in executing in coordinating in or doing all of these things just to get gypped it's more like getting gypped gold medal at the olympics so with all that being said 
said, what do we do from here? Crunchyroll needed to have issued a statement yesterday. There are way too many competitive people that are looking to leave right now. It is stuff like this that gives them a bad name, right? And like, to be honest, like my opinion of Crunchyroll is still, is still pretty up there. Personally, I'm not salty. I'm disappointed, but I actually have like a level of faith that Crunchyroll is going to fix this. How should they fix this? You ask? Well, I reckon it's pretty far-fetched, but like what I think they should do is that they should actually just give everyone the difference up to 10k. So for example, we got 6k, right? So just give us an extra 4k so that everybody would have received 10k gems from Crunchyroll. And then on top of that, recalculate the rankings and then give the true reward. I personally think that's the only way to do it. Like the other ways that they could do it is actually get everyone to go into negative balance. What I mean by that is that if you actually earn 10k, but you only were supposed to get like 4k, but you've already spent that 10k because you're going for that siren and I can't blame you, friend. So that means that you weren't supposed to have 6k of it. So they, and when they come to deduct like 6k of it, you'll be in a deficit, right? I would hate it if they did this. If they took this approach, oh my God, crunchy roll, like boom. This just screws like everybody. Well, okay. It doesn't screw me because I would go from like 6k to 10k. I would get the 4k. But for people that are going from like 10k to 5k and then suddenly they go into negative 5k, these are still people. And I guarantee you, it's not just the top 100 or 150 or 500 guilds that this will happen to. Another option is to roll back. And I'm still mixed about this one. On one hand, I hate losing progress. Obviously, if they compensated with like the amount of stamina that was spent or like extend like the two times hard mode shard farming, then okay, kind of maybe. A lot of people are going to be happy if they got bad rolls or they're going to be really upset if they got good rolls. I don't know if rolling back is the right answer, which is why I would defer to my first answer. I know giving out 10k jewels to everybody is quite a lot of money. The most they've ever given out is 3.5k jewels. We did, however, get a total of 100 tickets, which is equivalent to 15k jewels. I think it is within reason. I think they can do it. I think they should do it. But yeah, this one needs to get fixed. I know a lot of people that are already considering quitting just because of this fiasco. Again, guys, it's not about the gems. It's about the precedent and how Crunchyroll are handling it. I'm one of the more optimistic and hopefully, or I like to think, reasonable people. I think that Crunchyroll can fix this and I think they will fix this. It just depends on how. All right, guys, with that being said, that's the end of the video. Let's wrap it up. I've been rambling for way too long. Let me know if you guys got screwed over or if you guys gained. Honestly, if you guys gained, like go buy those shards real quick. I really hope that everyone benefits from this. I hope that nobody loses from this. All right, secret message. Let's go fix clan battle 2 please if you guys could drop that secret message down in the comments below i would really appreciate it, it tells me that you've made it to this very very long video if you've liked this video or if this video has helped you consider sharing it liking it commenting subscribing following i don't know how many more of these verbs i can keep up with but otherwise thank you guys so much again for watching and i will catch you guys in the next video bye bye